Kara Shalom, welcome to our watercolor journey. We are going to look at a different kind of tree today. The materials used are listed in the description below. On the palette, we have French ultramarine, cobalt blue, raw sienna, light red, a dark grey premix of French ultramarine and light red, quinacridone gold, a green premix of French ultramarine and quin gold, quinacridone red, and a purple premix of French ultramarine and quin red. Color alternatives are listed below. The Fabriano paper is taped to a board and it is lying flat on the table. The flat board allows Heinrich to control the flow of the paint a bit more. Heinrich uses the Princeton one inch mop to wet the paper about two thirds down. The mop holds a decent amount of water, so he usually does this in one go. He uses the Rosemary and Company number 10 squirrel round and raw sienna to start the sky. The raw sienna gives a lovely glow to the sky. He adds a bit of water to help the paint spread and to create some white spaces for the clouds. He then uses the grey premix of French ultramarine and light red to add shadows which will help to define the shapes of the clouds. The wet on wet environment helps to create soft edges which make the clouds look more natural. He takes the grey down to the horizon line to form the base of the foreground. Here he adds a touch of French ultramarine and then adds some cobalt to create variation in the blue of the sky. The cobalt is slightly cooler than the French ultramarine, so it recedes. The blue is also lighter at the bottom of the sky area to help create depth. He uses raw sienna on the dry paper in the foreground to establish the first layer of the foreground. He adds a bit of water to spread the paint and to create darker and lighter areas. This is a premix of French ultramarine and quinacridone red, which he will use for the distant mountains. He adds some of the grey premix as well to create variation. The sky area is damp, so the purple spreads a little, but because it is slightly thicker than the moisture on the paper, there won't be any blooms.
Heinrich prefers to use an old brush to do most of the mixing in his palette. He mixes some more grey and then uses the Heron number no. 3 flat brush to add some splatters to the foreground. Now this is the first time he used a flat brush for this and as you can see he still needs a bit of practice. Flat brushes can make lovely splatters but they are unpredictable. He makes the mix thinner and now the splatters are too large and out of control. He has not shielded the sky area so he has a few blobs of paint everywhere but all is not lost. If you work fast you can dab some of the excess dots out with a paper towel. He mixes some green with French ultramarine and quin gold, which he adds to the horizon to form a tree line. He's using the rosemary number no. 6 squirrel for this. He adds some of the other colors from the palette to create interest and variation in the tree line. The quin gold brings warmth, so it brings some of the trees forward. When he adds the French ultramarine, it cools the colors and pushes them backward. This helps to create perspective and depth. He mixes a bit more green and uses the number 6 brush to add some more splatters. The smaller brush gives you a bit more control over where the splatters will go. But again, you can get a few strays. Just dab them out. The paper is dry, so the splattered dots stay where they fell. To get them to diffuse a bit, Heinrich sprays them with a spray bottle. But be very conservative with the water here. You only want to reactivate the paint, not spread it too much. Let the painting dry. It's time to do the tree. He has a generous amount of the grey mix on his brush. The tree will have a fairly thick trunk and then branch out a bit. He wants to surround the trunk with something that resembles ivy, so he only draws the basic shape now. He mixes some more of the green, but adds a bit more French ultramarine to make the green darker and cooler. He adds dots of the green to the trunk to resemble the ivy growing around it. He uses some quin gold and the belly of the brush to add the foliage. The leaves in the middle of the tree are not distinct, so that is why he uses a fully loaded brush here. He adds some of the other colors from the palette for interest. Next are the thinner branches of the tree. He uses the Princeton Aqua Elite number no. 1 rigger to draw these branches.
He grounds the tree by adding a few lines underneath it. To add some loose leaves to the outer edges, he uses the belly of the rigger. He also uses the rigger to lift out some color on the trunk. He lightly brushes over the areas where he wants to make the trunk lighter. He then wipes the excess paint off on a paper towel. Allow the painting to dry again. This is the Rubens number no. 0 fan brush. He uses the fan to add grasses and rocks to the foreground. If you load the brush fully, it will give you larger swaths of paint. If you only dip the tip of the brush in the pool, you will be able to make streaks. He first uses it to lay a base layer for the grasses and then uses the tip to draw up the individual streaks of grass. He also adds a few distinct dots to the trunk to let the ivy stand out a bit. He varies the colors in the foreground to make it more interesting. He wants a fairly flat wash in the middle because the focus is on the tree in the front. He doesn't want the middle ground to detract from the tree. He uses the number 10 rosemary to add some green here. He adds a touch of purple to tie the mountains to the foreground. This harmonizes the colors in the painting. To add a bit of light, he uses a cut-up store card to scratch in some more prominent grasses. The paint has settled a bit, so when he scratches it now, the card pushes it to the side and leaves distinct white lines. He adds a few more distinct leaves with a fan brush to round off the tree. Thank you so much for your support. We really appreciate it. Would you please be so kind and press like and comment on this video. Also, please subscribe if you haven't already. It would help us a lot. Thank you for watching. We hope to see you soon. Vaya con Dios.